million miles sounds like a lot, but not for the Cummins diesel engine. Today, we'll find out why these engines are built to last. Welcome to Truck U, I'm Matt Steele. Hi, I'm Bruno Massel. Now today, it's all about durability, and we have a couple trucks in the shop that exhibit just that. They're both running the big Cummins engine in there, and you know when you think about Cummins, you think about durability. Now this truck here is a 2011 Ram, and it's got the 6.7 Cummins turbo diesel in it. Now, it looks brand new, but yep. believe it or not, it's got 30,000 miles on it. So we're going to do a little maintenance on it here today. Now, Matt, you talked about durability. Now, these engines are really built to last. We've got a number of customers have written in to us telling us they've got a million miles miles on their Cummins engines. Yeah. One's even documented a million and a half miles. I, I, Talk about stretching your dollar. That's great. That's getting your money's worth, yeah. which I like. And you know, I actually have a little truck that's got over 200,000 miles on it. And I thought that was impressive until this one rolled in. 2001 Dodge 2500 belongs to our buddy Cash. Cash, thanks for bringing this in. We appreciate it. And you know what he's pushing on this thing? About 897,000 miles. That's just ridiculous. Is that all you could do? You're slacking. I mean, you can't keep up with the Joneses. Come on. You're giving the guy a hard time. <laughs> you know? But a lot of questions come to mind when you think about a truck with 900,000 miles. It's like, God, how do they get on there, right? Yeah. So what, what do you do to put 900,000 miles on a truck in nine years? For me, I use it for work, and I tow boats cross country. Now, if it breaks down on you, you're going to be you're going to be out of money, so you've got to pick something that's pretty reliable. At 900,000 miles, is it still reliable? It's extremely reliable, and I believe that's pulling as hard as it did at two and 300. Now, I noticed you had a bunch of gauges in it, so what are you monitoring? Is that some kind of a preventative type of thing you're trying to do? It's a preventative thing, because I believe that before most things break, they either run out of fluid or, or they rise in temperature. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good indicator right there. Now, I heard there's a little nickname for this truck. I have some friends that call it the Roach, because they said that... <laughs> Nothing can kill it. If the <laughs> nuclear bomb can't kill a roach, then nothing's killing this truck. You know what's interesting? This is a great example of that, and a great example of if you keep your stuff up, it'll last a long, long time. You know, the guys at Cummins actually bought an engine back from a guy that had 280,000 miles on it, and they brought it back, they gave it to the guys in the white coats, they took it to the lab, and they ran all the tests, the same tests that they run on the new engine, and it passed every test. So that's a good example. What you've got here is a phenomenal example, and we want to do some maintenance for you, give you a break. You know what I mean? You're driving all that time, you need to sit back and relax, all right? So we're going to work on this. I like it. I'm down. Now, proper maintenance is the key to keeping these vehicles on the road for years and keeping these engines lasting. And fortunately, most of the really important things as far as maintenance goes are pretty easy to do. One of which is the fuel filter. You definitely want to maintain your fuel system, especially in a diesel. If you don't, then you've got potentially particles and water going around your system. You're going to get that into the pumps and into the injectors, and you don't want to have problems with that because that can cost you a lot of money down the road. They're not giving those injectors away anymore. Now, we go down here. This is really easy to get to. So you've got this little, right on the side of the housing, there's a little cap and you turn that a quarter of a turn and you can dr start draining the housing. Now if you can't reach in there and get it with your fingers, you can always, there's a setting there, you can use a screwdriver or whatever you got to use, but it's nice and easy to get to. Then we can go down here and get to the cap and get that out of the way. And once we get that loose, the rest of the housing will drain and we can pull this filter out. So get the cap out of the way. And I'm going to pull this up and take a look at it. And we shouldn't see any problems. It just looks like a wet filter. Looks pretty good. Now we're ready for our new filter, which is right here. We take a look at this, and this is going to go in here. This is a two stage filter, and it's got filter in filter technology, and it's doing a couple different things. It's filtering out the debris, and it's separating the water from the fuel. And you want to swap this baby out at least every 15,000 miles. Also, you want to use quality replacement parts, original parts in there, because if you get something aftermarket and it's not designed to work in this particular engine, that could give you some problems down the road as well. When you put this in, you put it in dry, okay? So we're going to slide this back in there, get that into place, and we're also going to replace this O-ring. So we'll get this out of the way, and we'll replace this O-ring. We'll get a little bit of oil on that. Now the reason you want to stick that in there dry 
is because let's say you take a like a fuel can that you've got laying around in the garage or something and you dump that into the housing to pre-fill it and you think well that'll be a good idea you don't need to do that plus if you've got any debris or any kind of junk in that fuel can now you've put it into the into the area right there and it's bypassed the filter so you're offsetting all the preventative maintenance that you're doing so don't do that we can actually prime this in the cab of the truck here in just a second so we'll get this o-ring back in place once we get into the cab to prime this pump, it's nice and easy. It's a little bit different than some of the older models on this particular one. All you want to do is go to key on for four seconds, key off, do that three times, it'll prime itself and you're rolling. Inside the cab there is a water and fuel light that will come on if you get some water down in there. Now don't panic at the light, it's a really easy thing to fix. You would just go down here to the little drain on the side, hit it a quarter turn, drain it out and then close it and reprime it and you're back on the road and you're rolling. One of the nice things about the fact that this being a, a inline six is the fact that it's so easy to work on. You can really get to everything. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. Since Matt changed the fuel filter we're up underneath the hood, we'll change out a couple other filters. Now, Ram and Cummins make it easy because they give you a little indicator on the dash telling you when to change the air filter. You don't have to worry about keeping track of miles and intervals and all that stuff. You see the indicator, you change it out. Now, one thing they do recommend is running an OEM filter. The reason why is because it's specifically calibrated for this engine. You know, you don't want dirt and debris getting inside here because of an inferior filter. Get this one out. You see what I mean? This stuff here kills engines. So we'll get the out of the, that out of the way, we'll put the new one in place. And one thing to keep in mind is that the filters for the 6.7 and the 5.9 look the same. The only difference is the 6.7 is much deeper. So make sure you get the right part number. Now while we're underneath the hood, we're going to change out the CCV filter. Now that's the closed crankcase ventilation filter. If you've got a truck prior to 2007 model year, you don't have to worry about it. You run an open crankcase. 2007, the new admissions laws come into place, so you've got to keep it closed. And to be compliant, you need this filter in place. Now, you only need to change it out at 67,500 miles, but this truck's only got 30. But we're here, fear might as well change it out for the guy, do him a favor. All you have to do is get this vanity cover out of the way, take this cap off, and the new one goes right into place. All you have to do is put the, a little bit of lubrication around these O-rings so you don't pinch them. Now one thing you want to keep in mind is keep the air tools away from these covers because they can damage the fasteners and that's something you don't want to do. We're here behind the cab of the truck because we need to top off the diesel exhaust fluid. Now, if you've got a 2010 emissions compliant diesel truck, you need to work with diesel exhaust fluid. The only exception is the Ram pickup trucks. They go a different way about meeting those emissions standards. But right now, this is a cabin chassis, so we need to deal with the diesel exhaust fluid. Matt, why don't we top off a little bit here? All you right. hold that for me. And then you can kind of explain what the, how this whole system works. Well, you know I love science and goofing around and seeing chemical reactions and whatnot, and that's exactly what's going on in the exhaust. So if you follow the line of the exhaust going to the rear of the vehicle, let's say you're on the back side of the, of the uh, particulate filter, okay? So what's happening is the exhaust is making its way back down the, the pipe, and this is actually getting sprayed in into a diffuser right there, so the, it all mixes together. The fluid mixes with the exhaust. Now, inside this catalyst is where the reaction takes place. And what's going on is all the chemicals are reacting together and tumbling around, basically to make a long scientific story much shorter and simpler. It's cleaning the exhaust so that it complies with the new emission standard. That's what's going on in there. Now, for you guys at home, all you need to realize is that you need to keep fluid in here. And there's a gauge inside your vehicle that tells you when you're low, gives you the warning indicators. Just make sure, though, that you put a few gallons in every th few thousand miles, right. I should say, because it's all going to depend on how hard you're driving is how much it's going to use. Now, all day today, we've been talking about the importance of using the right parts with the vehicle, right? So when you're buying this, you want to make sure it's a genuine Mopar part or you want to look for the API certification stamp right there. Make sure you get the right stuff. Today in the lab, we want to take a look at the results of putting in a Z-Max fuel formula inside your engine. Now, specifically, we want to look at these little direct port injectors, okay? These were not treated or used with Z-Max, and you can see why, because up here, take a look at the nozzle right up top there. There's a lot of crud going on, and that's not good. 
Yeah, carbon buildup anywhere in your fuel system is not good, whether it's carbureted or you got a standard injector or these direct port injectors, which are susceptible to this carbon buildup much more. Now, the problem is, is when these have a carbon buildup, it affects the spray pattern coming out. It needs to be an ultra fine spray so the fuel gets atomized inside the engine. Now, when you've got situation where carbon builds up on it, it's going to change that pattern and restrict it. In mild situations, you'll have engine knocking or a rough idle. In extreme situations, if one of these were to get completely plugged or mostly plugged, your engine can actually lose the cylinder and you can burn up your entire engine because it'll go lean. Now another issue a lot of guys are having is with a lot of the diesel trucks, right? So you've got the newer diesel, then you've got the biodiesel, a lot of different grades and some of their parts are seasoned up because they're not lubricated correctly, whether it's the fuel pump or worse yet the injectors because those aren't cheap. You don't want that thing seasoned up on you. Well, the Z-Max, you pour that in, it's going to keep those parts lubed up and keep them lasting longer. It keeps your engine running cooler, cleaner and keeps you on the road longer and it's as simple as adding it in to your fuel system. Welcome back. Now today we've been talking about the durability of the Cummins engine and the fact that as long as you keep it properly maintained, it's going to keep you on the road for many years and many miles. Now fortunately for us, the most of the maintenance is pretty simple to do. The oil change is next and that's really easy to do. Now think of the oil as like the lifeblood of the vehicle. So you want to keep that stuff fresh and clean and change it out at the right intervals. Now the best part is you really don't even have to pay attention. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the dash because the dash will tell you when you need an oil change and you, like I said, you don't even have to think about it. Just when those lights come on, make sure you do what it tells you to do. Now another cool thing about this particular vehicle is the fact that it's got the integrated exhaust brake. Now, this brake is really cool, and Bruno, on a side note, I'll tell you this, you know this better than anybody, I love cutaways. These are awesome. And this is a really cool one because this is a really cool turbo. It's called a variable geometry turbo, and I'm going to make it very simple because this is pretty complicated, and I'll try and tell you how it works. Now, what we're talking about is the sliding nozzle is kind of what makes all the magic happen here. So this is moving back and forth across the exhaust blade, and we're talking about the variable geometry. It's the geometry of the exhaust blade itself and the turbo. So what you're doing is you're changing the geometry there, and you're essentially changing the size of the turbo. Now you may ask yourself, well, why would I want to change the size of the turbo? We want the biggest, baddest one you can have, right, to make all the power. But not all the time. You want it to be seem smaller so it'll spool up faster, it'll accelerate quicker, get rid of all that turbo lag. And when that does that, it opens up again, and boom, now you've got the big turbo. You can make all that big pulling power, which makes this even more cool is the integrated exhaust brake. And that all comes into play here with this sliding nozzle. When you push the button in the cab, what it'll do is you lift off the throttle. This will close up like that and that will give you a bunch of back pressure by closing off the exhaust blade itself and that's going to slow your truck down. That's how the exhaust blade operates. Now you know what this does really? It saves your pads and your rotors and everything else that's in the whole line of the whole braking system. Right. Especially if you're pulling a trailer. I mean think about it. Now you can turn this thing off or on, right? So some people will say, well can I just leave it on all the time? Absolutely you can. You don't need to, but you could. It's not going to hurt anything. Really where this all comes into play and where you want to use it is either if you're pulling a trailer right. or you're on a hill or you're pulling a trailer on a Hill. In all serious though, this is great because it comes standard on all Cummins powered pickups and cabin chassis. So it can save you a bunch of money to add one in the aftermarket. So it costs you up to thousands of dollars. Now you were talking about Pikes Peak, right? right? So you had some of the Ram guys and some of the Cummins guys. They took a couple trucks all the way up to the top of Pikes Peaks. Trucks weighing in about 9,600 pounds, right? And so if you've ever driven down Pikes Peak, you know it's a bit of a crazy drive and it can get a little bit steep. And there's a ranger station there that you've got to stop in there and they check the temperature on your brake. And if they're too hot, they make you pull off to the side and let them cool off. That's to keep the brakes from failing and to keep you from, you know, careening down the side of the mountain. That's a good thing yes, that they it do. Is. Now, what these guys did, they drove all the way down in those trucks, didn't even touch the brakes. So when they got to the ranger station, they're like, go ahead, check them, you know. And the guys checked them. They were like 86 degrees or whatever the ambient temperature was. Didn't even touch the brakes, went all the way down. Now, that is very, very impressive. That is really impressive. And the nice thing about it, too, is this is not an engine brake like you'd have on a big rig. Right. This is an exhaust brake break and all those engine brakes and those big rigs you see the signs where population grows out to the expressway sure. and it says no engine brakes allowed because it makes that noise it's you three love three in the morning and you hear that wah, 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 wah. different story here you're not going to have that sound with this and we'll fill this baby oh there we go 
You know, we mentioned earlier that this is a 2011 Ram chassis cab. And as the name implies, when you buy this, you get a chassis and a cab. There's nothing on the back of the truck, which is actually a good thing because you're buying a truck like this because you want it to work for you. So with nothing on the bed of the truck, you can custom fit that and put whatever you want to on there and make your ultimate work truck. Yeah, it is an ultimate work truck because it's designed specifically for what you want. You can tailor the wheelbase to your application. You can make it an automatic or a manual or two or four wheel drive. You can change the cab configurations. And whether it's going to be a rollback truck for you or a, a tow vehicle, maybe a fifth wheel trailer or a box truck or just about anything else in between, it'll fit exactly what you want it for and it'll be custom made for your specific needs. Yeah, and this is the little one. It's got two bigger brothers in the 4500 and the 5500 as well, too. So a lot of work can be done. And I think it's a beautiful truck. You know, it's very, very cool to look at. And the most important thing is they're all powered by that durable Cummins diesel. And really, man, what says durability more than a truck with almost 900,000 miles on it, right? And that one's coming back in the shop here in a couple of minutes. It's easy to see why the mirrors on the 81 project truck need to be changed. So we ordered our mirrors from LMC Truck. These flat glass mirrors were used from 1977 to 87 and are exclusively manufactured for LMC Truck. All the hardware is included with the mirror, including retainers and gaskets. And the left and right hand bases are made to fit the curvature of the door, so you can't put the mirrors on wrong. LMC Truck also offers these mirrors in chrome and black. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. With over 30,000 truck parts in stock, you can get the right part at the right price right now. Welcome back to Truck U. You know, the guys at Duplicolor are constantly coming up with new ideas and new products in an effort to make painting projects easier for you and I, and we love that. And this is one of their newest ideas right here. It's the Duplicolor Perfect Match Premium Automotive Paint. No, it's great because it's easy to use, it's high quality, and it's fast drying. And it's an acrylic lacquer that's specifically designed to match the OEM paint on your vehicle. So they've got a complete line of this for any current or late model vehicles, and it's for a domestic or an import. So if you've got to do some small touch-up work or you want to color match an accessory, this is the way to go. Yeah, you look at your color code, your paint code on the vehicle, which is most of the time it's right inside the door. You just open it up, you find the white sticker, you get your color code, and you match it up with that on the back of the cap. That way you know you're getting exactly what you need to get. So you can fix it up, and then when you get your color matched, you can hit it with the clear coat, and it looks just like it did when it came from the factory. It's the Duplicolor Perfect. Perfect match premium automotive paint. This is the Monomax shock from KYB America, and it's a nice upgrade for your shocks on your vehicles. Now, if you've just got the Altima or Bruno's smart car, you know these these twin tube shocks are going to be just fine for if you're never taking it off-road. But if you want to do any kind of pulling a trailer or any kind of hauling, any kind of off-road driving or aggressive driving, this Monomax design is going to be a significant upgrade. Now the difference is in the design of the shock itself. With the twin tube design, what's happening is you're mixing not only the nitrogen gas with the fluid inside the shock, and that's fine with everyday driving like Matt said, but what happens when the shock's really working but going back and forth, you start aerating that fluid with the nitrogen. The mix of the two is actually, the result ends up being like you're going to lose the dampening, like you'd have a spongy brake pedal. Well, if your brakes get uh, aerated, the same type of scenario happens with this shock. Now with this model shock design, you don't have that because the gas and the fluid are kept separate, so the dampening will continue to be at a high level no matter how aggressive you get, no matter how hard the shock is working back and forth. Yeah, I mean, to really simplify what's going on here, you've got a bigger piston, the tube is bigger, and it's keeping that gas and the shock oil separate, so like you said, you don't have that aeration. That's the whole idea behind the Monomax shock from KYB America. You know, every now and then something comes along that's really simple, but it makes life a lot easier. And that's what these do. It's the Z-Cals, and what they are is their toolbox identifying kits. Now think about it. If you don't have your toolbox organized, you have a hard time finding the right tool. Let's say you need some help from somebody and you're working underneath a vehicle. You say, hey, Matt, can you get me the screwdriver? Can you get me the wrench? I'm well, just lost. I don't know where it's at. Well, how will he know where it's at? So that's where these come into play. It's all about getting organized. So if you spend a little time and use these cool little identifiers, it'll make your life a whole lot easier and save you a lot of time in the long run. And each one of these kits has 70 of these units right there for all the most common tools. So like you said, you're saving time and making life easier. And that's what the Z-Cals are all about. We've worked with the guys at Monster Transmission a lot in the past. You maybe even remember the Monster in a Box. That was a lot of fun. Well, the cool thing about Monster Transmission is not only are they a great transmission company, but they're also very actively involved in their community as well. 
They recently gave back by having the Monster Performance Transmission Auto Show and Children's Charity event where they had vendors and vehicles like trucks, cars, motorcycles yep. from all over the nation attend. And the best part about it is all the proceeds benefit local charities. Now you can check out their website and see all the different products and services that they offer. And you can even get some information about next year's event and maybe you can be a part of it. That being said, we need to take a break right now. And when we come back, we'll keep working on that 900,000 mile truck. We gotta get that baby. It's like million. you, dude. It's got a lot of miles on it. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. You got it? Yeah, I think I got it. But... Slide that baby on it. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Now, we've gone from one extreme to the other. Now, we're talking 2011, 2001. 30,000 miles, almost 900,000 miles. But really, the common theme of everything today has been maintenance and the importance of maintaining the basics in your vehicle, right? And this is living proof right here of how long something can last when it's properly maintained. And it's just the little things, you know, changing the oil on regular intervals, changing the fluids, changing the filters. The little things has kept this thing alive and kept cash making a living with this truck. And I'll tell you something, those little things have paid for this truck <laughs> 10 times over. <laughs> Yeah, this is a high mileage vehicle, and Cummins has something that they call the High Mileage Club. And you can contact Cummins for more information about that if you've got a high mileage vehicle and you want to join that club. But this is the starter kit right here, 100,000 miles. That's pretty cool, right? Some people are probably happy to get that. Pfft, punky. <laughs> Kid stuff. This guy rolls with the big ones right here. Look at this. 900,000 miles and counting. Man, he's getting close to that million miles. Here's the problem. Honestly, he's 3,000 miles shy, right? So do we give that to him yet, or I mean, how do we handle this? I say we give him the benefit of the doubt, because the next time we see him, the, might, the thing might have 902,000 miles on right. it, because you never know where he's going to go. So we might not catch him until afterwards, so I say we give him a little love up front. We could just hop in this thing and put 3,000 miles on it real quick. I say we continue, keep on keeping on, and let him go do his business. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. All right, well, this is going to look good right there, and he is officially badged, and that's how it's going to look. High mileage vehicle, almost a million miles. That's awesome, and that's all the time we have this week. We'll see you guys next time right here on Truck U.